Hey everyone, it's Professor Clark, and in this lecture, we are going to start learning about the genitive plural. The textbook has the genitive plural all lumped together into one big monster grammar section, but I decided it would be easier for everyone if we broke it up. So in this particular lecture, we are going to go over the genitive plural of regular nouns. Don't worry, there will be more than enough to get on with in just this. I've been kind of um, giving you teasers about the genitive plural uh, throughout the semester so far uh, and telling you, oh, don't worry, like you can't do this until you learn the genitive plural or you should be very scared. The genitive plural is very difficult. Uh, well, here we are. It's time for the genitive plural. And as far as usage, we use the genitive plural in the same situations generally as we would use the genitive singular, but with plural nouns. So that's pretty straightforward. However, its case endings are very challenging compared to the other case endings. So all the other cases have normally two sets of endings. They have hard endings and they have soft endings. Uh, the genitive plural, on the other hand, has five, plus numerous exceptions and irregular nouns that we will learn in the next lecture. So this is, this is kind of crazy. So the basic rule of thumb for the genitive plural that you should remember going forward is that it is the opposite of the nominative singular. So if in the nominative singular there is some kind of a vowel at the end of the noun, it will disappear in the genitive plural. If at the end of a noun in the nominative singular there is no vowel, there is no ending, um, or the ending is a soft sign or something like that, we are going to add an ending so the genitive plural is pretty much always going to be the inverse of the nominative singular. Let's start with noun type one, and these are nouns that take zero endings in the genitive plural. So these are nouns that have an a ah or an o oh in the nominative singular. So this is gonna be hard stem feminine nouns uh, and the occasional masculine noun that ends in an a, ah, and then hard stem neuter nouns, and so in the nominative singular, they end in a or o. In the genitive plural, they will lose that ending and they will end in a hard consonant. For example, mama, mom, becomes mom, M-A-M. Adna mama menoga mom. Miesta, a place or a seat, becomes miest. Bolnitsa, a hospital, becomes bolnitz. Firma, a firm or a company, becomes firm. If a noun ends in a hard a ah, or o, oh, we just chop it off to form the genitive plural. However, when we chop off a vowel at the end of a noun, uh, fill vowels can appear. So you remember that we learned about fill vowels that disappear when we add an ending. There are also fill vowels that appear when we take away an ending. And so some nouns in this group, this noun type one group with the zero endings, have consonant clusters at the end of their stem. And when we take away the ending, they will gain a fill vowel in the genitive plural. Uh, and this is going to happen with pretty much all nouns that end in a consonant plus ka, plus various other nouns that you just have to learn. So it's not 100% of nouns that have a consonant cluster at the end of their stem, it's just most of them. Uh, but if they end in ka, they are going to have a fill vowel. So that's the one rule you can, you can definitely go with. And most of them end in ka. This fill vowel is either ye or o, and you remember when we learned with the prepositional and the nominative plural how nouns ending in yets or ok would tend to lose their fill vowel when we added an ending. Well, the same thing happens in the other direction. Uh, nouns will gain a ye or an o when we take away their ending. So when do we use ye versus when do we use o? 
uh, there are various ways of making this rule, but what your textbook says, and this is more or less correct, is that we are going to use ye after a husher, or if we were replacing bjarkisnak or ikratkoye. So some common examples of this would be babushka, grandmother, becomes babushek. We have shka in the nominative singular that is going to become shek in the genitive plural. And this is a very, very, very common example of this type of fill vowel. Diedushka, grandfather, becomes diedushek. Again, shka becomes shek. Uh, the same thing happens with chka. Uh, so vnuchka, granddaughter, becomes vnuchek, and so on and so forth. This is very, very common. We also have a few nouns like pismo, a letter. And we see there's a myakiznak uh, between the se and the m. When we put it in the genitive plural, it becomes pisim. We take away the myakiznak and we add ye. And there are a few nouns that have an ikratkoya before ka, like kapieka, a kopek. And in that case, we again will replace it with ye. Adna kapieka, mnoga Kapiek, ye yek. For most other nouns, um, and there's not a huge number of them, but um, they are definitely out there, we're going to use o. So akno becomes oken. Amerikanka becomes Amerikanak. And again, here we have this consonant plus ka, uh, but because the consonant preceding the ka is not a husher, we are going to use o rather than ye. Yeah. And then you just have to keep track of a small handful of nouns like sistra that becomes sistior and kresla, an armchair, becomes kresl with a ye. Yeah. So there you have your fill vowels. Uh, and it can seem kind of overwhelming. Just remember that it's almost always something plus ka. So if you see something plus ka, know that you're going to need a fill vowel in the genitive plural. Now that we've learned about fill vowels in the genitive plural, let's go on to noun type two, which are soft zero endings. And this is when you have a noun that ends in a consonant plus ya, and there aren't very many of them, but there are a few and they are important. We are going to drop the ya and add myakisnak because we have to preserve the softness of the consonant. And the most important ones for you to know are nidelia, a week, becomes nidiel. We drop that ya and we add yakisnak to preserve the softness of the L. And then kuchnya, a kitchen, becomes kuchen. And notice we have a fill vowel here. So we have both rules applying. We have a consonant cluster at the end of the stem. So we need to break it up and we add o. And then we need to preserve the softness of that N, so we add myakisnak, kuchnya kuchen. And those are the two main words from this group that you need to memorize. Now let's go on to noun type three, the third noun type that we're looking at. And these are nouns that end in iye or iya in the nominative singular, and they will become i ikratkoya in the genitive plural. Uh, so these are both uh, feminine and neuter nouns. Once again, we have feminine and neuter collapsing together into one uh, paradigm, which is very unusual. In all the other cases, it's masculine and neuter. But in the genitive plural, it's feminine and neuter. And this is actually just another form of a zero stem ending because we take this iye or iya and we drop the um, final vowel, and that's just what we're doing, and we just have to fill it in with an ikratkoya to show that kind of y sound. So it's just another zero stem ending. We're dropping that final vowel. Uh, because the vowel is soft, we are preserving the softness by adding an ikratkoya. And some common examples would be zanyatia, a college class, becomes zanyati with an i ikratkoya. Abshijitia, a dormitory, abshijiti. Versia, a version, versi. Photographia, a photograph, 
fotografii. And the important thing to remember is to write the ikratkoya at the end of the noun. The fourth noun type are nouns ending in hushers, uh, so r, ch, sh, sh, or myakisnak. And these can be either masculine or feminine. And either way, we are going to drop any myakisnak at the end and then add a ye. For example, uchitil, a male high school teacher, becomes uchitilye. Loshids, a horse, becomes lashidye. Ploshids, a city square, becomes plashidye. Garash, a garage, becomes garaji. Padyesh, a case, like a grammatical case, becomes padaji. And note that uh, in all of these examples, the yi is stressed. The yi is not always stressed uh, with this form. There are plenty of nouns that do not put a stress on the yi, but it very frequently is stressed. So that's something to keep in mind. And finally, we get to noun type five, which are the of yef nouns. These are nouns ending in a hard consonant in the nominative singular or ikratkaya, and we are going to add of or yef to them in the genitive plural. Most of the nouns in this group are going to end in a hard consonant. Uh, they are all going to be masculine, and most of them are going to end in a hard consonant, and we just add of. So uchebnik becomes uchebnikov. And note how we write v, ov, but we are going to pronounce it of because it is at the end of the word, and therefore there is devoicing. Magazine becomes magazinov. Atyets becomes atsov. Note that fleeting vowel, that fleeting yeah, that goes away when we add an ending. And then we're going to write and say of, even though it is after ts, because it is under stress. So we can have an of after ts if the of is stressed. However, Nouns that end in s that have their stress on the stem have to have yef as their genitive plural ending. So miesitz, a month, becomes miesitzef with a yef. Amerikanitz, an American man, becomes amerikansef. And notice how we lose that ye before the tsa. Remember that yetz is often going to lose its ye when we add an ending. And then we add yef because we have an unstressed ending after ts. Adin Amerikanets, Manoga Amerikansev. And then nouns ending in ikratkaya in the nominative singular are going to lose their ikratkaya and take a yef in the genitive plural. So muze, museum, becomes muzeev. Geroi, a hero, becomes geroyev. Cafetiri, a cafe or cafeteria, becomes Kafetiriev. There aren't a huge number of those nouns, but there are a few that are important, like muzie and geroi, and so you do need to know what to do with them. And so there you have the regular endings for the genitive plural. Those are just the regular noun endings for the genitive plural, and you may be thinking, man, those are a lot of endings, and you would be right. So don't hesitate to take plenty of time to go over this, mull over it, um, write out lots of charts, go over the charts in the textbook and copy them out. It's really helpful, I find, for a lot of people to copy things out by hand when you are trying to memorize endings and vocab. So I would strongly recommend doing that, especially for the genitive plural.